Hello? Hey Khalil, how you going? How you guys doing today? Just finish setting up this here today. All right. And I think we are live. Uh, let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me all right. I did a few changes to the to the layout on my OBS. Um, just just want to make sure that you guys can see everything properly. Um, I just fiddle around with some stuff. Um, I changed the the chat, so hopefully it's bigger now. Uh, the the theme I changed that, uh, so hopefully you can see a little bit better the comments. Uh, great, awesome. Yeah, so that was one of the the things um, that you guys let me know. You know. You told me that it was <laughs> it was pretty hard to read, and then I I rewatched some of the the streams, and yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it looked awful. Alrighty, um, hey everyone, hey the Hanifer. Good to have you here. So let's just give it a few more minutes before we get started. Um, but I'm gonna show you something that I um, that I worked um, after we we finished last time. So basically, there's no there's no any difference really between what we did last week and uh, and this character here. The only thing I did was I just spent like five more minutes after I, I stopped the stream just um, pushing pushing polygons here in the body. So you'll see that um, if you have a look at the very last sort of like screenshot of last stream, it was a little bit uh, simple or like a bit flat. It feel like just a very very rough um, block out of the body. So all I did was just uh, with the move brush just push things a little bit. But it's not it's not you know it's just worth mentioning. But it's nothing different. So um, I'm gonna show you a little sketch that I did. Um, it's, it's exactly the same thing as I showed you before with the feature mapping. Um, but this one is just slightly. I mean it's still pretty rough and sketchy. But um, at least I just put some colors. Um, to have an idea of like the color palette that I want to go for, and and the mood, and so you'll see for the most part it's just a a brown brown palette, and just the kind of like the mask and these ornaments are the colorful ones, so it sort of like draws the attention of the viewer towards the face, which is kind of like what I want for this character. Um, so today I'm gonna focus on. Uh, let me just bring in my. Epic pen. All right, so I'll just chuck this one in here. Cool. So um, the idea for today is concentrating on the face. Um, so I'm going to show you a few techniques for the for the face. We're going to do some panel loops, uh, some projection, some uh, noise maker. Um, what else we can do? Uh, we can do a few things for the for the face. Uh, so this is like a the, the the more fun that you can have with this character, I think. So this uh, the mask is going to be an interesting one. Uh, we're going to do some detailing here as well for the for the horns, um, and probably. I mean the 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 this little stick that the guys use using is probably going to be the same or very similar to the um, to the horns, like in terms of the process. So um, we avoid this one. Because it's just gonna be the same thing, the same technique, and I'm just trying to show you different processes, and I'm just trying to think whether or not um, we might detail a little bit the the body as well. I just want to do kind of like a stylized hair, very stylized, so we can do something like that, uh, just some clumps of hair, and I'll show you a, a simple technique using VDMs, and other than that. We're probably gonna leave ah maybe for the for the mask we also do some fiber mesh for this area. I'm I'm just thinking that area could be just attached to the mask and that's gonna be a different fiber mesh from from this area right here. So hopefully that um so hopefully today we can cover all that and for the next stream because I think this is like um a bigger project so we'll have to you know spread it across a few streams. So the next one we'll probably just tackle the the uh, the pose of the character, and once we have the character pose, we can do, you know, the the clothes and the 
the fiber mesh it's like a fur coat kind of thing that he's wearing and this one I'll probably make it a little bit longer like the fur coat just make it a, a, a massive thing on top of the character so uh, yeah so hopefully that's um, that's gonna be fun <laughs> fun to watch I'm just trying to show you different things so that it's not just a stream of uh, of me sculpting because that's kind of like the the stage where I tend to just zone out just sculpting things all right see how you guys are in the chat cool so I'm also been uh, looking at some references for for the mask um, so I'm, I'm thinking of doing kind of like a wood wood type of mask um, but I want to keep it I want to keep it very rough as in like if it's something that the character did himself so like he he just chipped things away and, and cut and, and pasted pieces of of wood so hopefully that's gonna be fun hey embody em, em, emmy boy <laughs> how you going cool so all right if you guys have any questions throughout the stream obviously feel free to put them in the chat and uh, now you can you will be able to see them a little bit easier and I'm gonna be constantly looking for um, any questions so, so that I can answer them or address them during the stream um, but yeah so hopefully it's gonna be fun today uh, some some cool stuff some some cool techniques that, that I can show you so I'm gonna start maybe let's start with some sculpting just because you know to 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 get us started with something so I'm gonna select the the horns and I'm gonna go into solo mode and if you remember the horns were something that we started with um, a primitive and then we just used the the deformers to tweak the shape and also the the C modeler so the the geometry if I turn polyframe you'll see it's it's quite decent so it's all right like we can just use this as a as a base to you know keep subdividing it and and adding details so in this case the the, the base geometry is all right we don't have to really do any redyna meshing or uh, sorry C remeshing or anything like that um, we might get away with just playing with this one thing that I might want to do is work on the polygrouping so that it's easy to to create selection parts and and, and masks uh, but other than that we're pretty pretty good to go so let me just switch to this color and uh, make sure I have symmetry enabled and I'm gonna go ahead and try to create a polygroup just for this kind of like inner area or what I think could be the inner side of the horn and this outer area so um, ideally I want to end up with two different polygroups one that goes like this way so this would be one polygroup and the other one would be here a little bit that you can see over there right so the idea is that once I have these two polygroups I will be able to um, select this one uh, very quickly and create mask and then we can use inflating and, and other techniques but I mean everything is, should be pretty straightforward and it's just a sculpting method but it's better if we have be um, a better polygrouping or a better set of polygroups so let's have a look so we can start with something like that and we'll probably just need to hide some areas here so I'm gonna select my select lasso I'm gonna hold control and shift and I'm gonna click on this edge and the select lasso you probably know this already but the select lasso is the one that allows you to select poly loops or poly edge loops no poly loops <laughs> so this is a poly loop right so you can select that like so do the same thing on this area all right and I'll probably need to hide this as well the, the top part just to um, to separate them and I'm gonna do the same thing um, all 
All right, so something like that, and the same thing for this one. Oops. All right. So nothing crazy there. Uh, but what once we do that, and we have this kind of like split into two, I mean, there is no connections of, poly, of polygons connecting these pieces. We can run in an auto group, right? So now we have for every single piece that is not uh, connected or well, it is connected, but that is visually not connected. So we have some areas that are hidden. Then we have different polygroups. And now let's go ahead and bring everything else. And let's do the same thing for the, the other polygroups that we have, which are these ones here and this one. So we had a, we have these kind of lines. And so what I'm thinking is maybe, let's actually select like the yellow ones just the, the yellow polygroups. And I'm gonna do a similar process. I'm just gonna try to hide, kind of like breaking them apart or just hiding some areas so that they feel like the there are two, but well in this case, they're gonna be four different ones. I don't know if I'm just mumbling things. <laughs> um, don't know if that makes any sense. But what I'm trying to do is just generating some polygroups so that I can select things easier. Let's just run another auto group. All right, so we have a bunch of polygroups now, but at least now they're not, not, not everything is connected. So hopefully, I mean, my idea is now that I can select a few and I, at the end, I wanna end up with two main polygroups, uh, maybe one here for the bottom as well. So I wanna select the blue one and because I have symmetry selected, but also I run the auto groups, so it's just creating two different polygroups on each side. So I'm just gonna select these two, invert that, and Control W to select, uh, to assign a single polygroup to this, right? So that's looking good. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other polygroup that I wanna generate, which in this case would be this one and this one. Cool. All right, um, Parallel Cabo, um, all, all of the base mesh is created in ZBrush. Um, yes, everything, uh, if you look at the, if you watch the previous stream, everything that we've done so far is, it's already everything done in ZBrush. So the base meshes and everything. Uh, we use C spheres for the body and then created a re-topology for that. And this one in this case, the, the horns are just uh, primitive and then we just tweak that. So uh, yeah, all the base mesh is done in here. Cool, hey, Eva Pixel, how you doing? All right, so I think the easiest way now that we have this sort of um, split into little polygons or polygroups is to start selecting the ones that we wanna keep into one single polygroup. So I wanna select the blue ones, invert that selection, um, select maybe this one, which would be the same for this side. And I'll do the same thing for that one. Um, this is something that I forgot to do. So I'm gonna select this one, right? And I forgot to split this one or do the auto groups for this one. So I'm gonna do auto groups again. And now we can do this process. So this, this might look like a very convoluted process to just generating uh, poly groups, but I want a very specific flow of polygroups, you could potentially just create a single polygroup and then just uh, hide the, the middle part and that would be actually easier. But since we already have that, might as well just do it. Right, so I think that's it for that one. Uh, we might need, actually we might need this as well. All right. And let's just pay attention here at the top and see. We probably need these ones as well. Cool, so I'm gonna invert that. Make sure here at the bottom, I don't have this one selected. Hmm. Just thinking, what would be, um, this this part of the process is just like trying to figure out what um, what to leave or what to uh, what to keep in the polygrouping. So I think I'm gonna 
select my lasso tool and I'm just gonna manually hide this bit so now this looks a bit more a bit friendlier like the shape of it so have a look so I think it looks a bit better I'm gonna hide these two or four pieces here and I'm gonna hold control W so this is one polygroup right so you see it's very very specific a very you know very well defined polygroup and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna invert that so this is the other one uh, but I want to hide I don't want everything so I'm gonna hide let's hide this one this one this one and this one and probably the yellow ones as well all right I'm gonna invert that Hang on a second. So this is the one that we already have. I already got confused myself. Okay, so I'm just going to create a single polygraph for this. It's just going to be easier. And then we'll figure out the, the bottom. So this is what I currently have. Two sets of polygroups, but this is going to allow us to do some nice masking and some uh, good selections. So the purple one is good. Um, the other one is also good. I just want to have have to affect the, the base. So I'm going to select this one and probably just manually let's see if we can select a poly a poly loop here or a, yeah poly loop like that. All right, so probably I think that one works. It's not connecting anything, so Auto group. Now we can bring back everything. I'm gonna hide the purple one. I'm gonna hide these two now, and I'm gonna hold Control W for the base. Perfect. Um, I just need to convert these ones into a single one. Just trying to create a different color so you guys can see it better. Perfect. <laughs> All right about like 10 minutes just to do this. Um, again, it would have been actually easier if you just use the select lasso, hold control and shift, and select one of these loops, and then just do the, the poly group, uh, auto group, poly, what is it? Auto, auto poly grouping. I forgot the name already. Auto groups. <laughs> and then you can just get that. But um, now that we have this here, we can, uh, let's just do a quick save just in case, and we can start the the normal sort of approach of subdividing things, just uh, subdividing the whole thing and start adding details, just sculpting details. All right. So, hi, I'm a serious beginner, so I was wondering what is the purpose of making them in polygroups? So, polygroups is just a um, a selection method, really. Uh, you can do a, a lot of things within polygroups, like polygroups are uh, one of the best things, I think, in ZBrush. Um, but essentially they're like selection so it's a selection tool so a way to selecting things but once you have polygroups you can um, use those selection tools to create a whole bunch of different things so um, that's something that we can do with the, or that I'm going to show you with the with the mask so we're going to take we're going to take some polygroups and other than just creating selection areas or or pieces of polygons that we can select very easily we can take that and use them into into a more interesting technique with um, panel loops, for example. So we're going to do that later on. I'm going to select the move brush, make sure that I have AccuCurve selected. And I'm going to bring in the rest of the model. So I think these areas just go inside, so you probably won't see them much. I just want to do a quick, very, very quick refinement of the, of the general shape. So this is just move brush, um, just me pushing things. So basically, what I'm thinking at this at this stage is that um, reduce the intensity for the smooth brush. Uh, what I'm thinking is that the green one is the kind of like the outer edge of the horn, whereas this one is kind of like the inside. 
just want to see a little bit more of the of the green area coming through here at the back. So yeah, this area right here will be good to see a bit more. Because um, it started to look a little bit um, thinner and I want this to be quite thick. Something else we can do is just simply rotate the whole thing. So I'm just go, gonna position the gizmo in the pivot or the area that I wanna rotate from. I just rotate this forward a bit. All right, so that that kind of helps us with this with the silhouette of the horns. Very subtle, but it all helps. Cool. So let's say that this is our base mesh. Are we happy with that? Let's go into solo mode, and now we can start uh, detailing. So the first thing I want to do is uh, do a rough pass, uh, sort of to establish the kind of like the secondary the secondary shapes. Um, on where the details are going to be. So for that, I'm going to subdivide this a couple of times. And I'm going to use my custom brush, uh, which is just a, an enhanced version of the standard brush. It's just a bit, um, it's a bit stronger. All right. Yeah, so something like that is fine. I'm going to divide it one more time. So you see it's very smooth, but it has a, a strong effect and it's a little bit sharper. Um, yep, so again, let's go ahead and start just by doing this. I'm going to hold the Alt key just to push this in. So you'll see it just pushes that geometry. Like I said, it's, it's just a, a stronger version of the, of the standard brush. So all I'm doing here is just some control lines to push in the geometry and trying to follow the, the curvature of this horn. And once I finish with this pass, you will be able to, to, to see a little bit clearer what I'm trying to do with the, with the two different polygroups, I guess. So one it's a, sort of have this, the same details but going inwards, and the other one's going to be sticking out, basically. Maybe I will combine them or, or do a more subtle transition here towards the towards the tip area. Right, let's do another pass really quickly here. Just gonna apply a bit more pressure. And I'm just going over the same details with a small with a smaller brush, um, more pressure. And that way we can sort of refine the the indentations. But nothing, nothing too complicated. This is just some standard subdivision and sculpting manual process. Cool. So if I rotate this around, hopefully you can see a little bit better what I'm trying to do. So this area would be embedded or like sort of carved in or carved in, and the this other area will be the opposite. It will be sort of sticking out, right? So hopefully it's just going to create some nice contrast. I'm going to increase the size of my brush a bit. Let's check that from the right angle. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing, but starting from here. And I have a lot of control over the Let's say how straight the lines are uh, with this custom brush, just because it also has a lazy mouse and it has a radius of 30, which is it's quite a bit. Um, so the more, the higher this value in the lazy mouse, the more control you'll have over the strokes. So you'll see the the line, the red line that appears as I drag, that is the that's that has to do with this number and the lazy mouse. So the larger that number the longer that line would be, so there's going to be more laziness in the strokes. And that just helps you with the, with the control. You see, if I, if I turn lazy mouse, this, the effect is going to be even stronger. And I'll show you how to use that uh, in a second. Um, but you won't have as much control. So I'm going to turn this off 
for the time being. And you see the lazy radius also goes gray. You see, I try to do the same thing and it's just a bit wobbly, stronger and a bit wobbly. And that is because of that lazy mouse. I'm gonna leave it on to complete this pass. But you know, it's just um, a manual process of adding details uh, with the normal approach of sculpting. Also using the, the smooth brush every now and again. Can reduce the, the brush size a little bit. So I'll use the brush size as I go closer to the tip so that the details also are proportional to, to the to the position or to the to the placement of it. But as you can see, starting also with a clean topology allows us to work very cleanly and uh, it's very very smooth. There's no many you know wonky areas. Um, the ones that I mean, the ones that are very obvious, we will be able to fix that quickly with a with a smooth brush, uh, but we have a good topology. It's not the, it's not perfect. It's not the greatest, but we started with a simple, with a simple primitive, so it shouldn't be a huge deal. Alright, let's see the let's have a look at the chat. Um I find it easy to get lost with too many subtools, even with folders. Um yeah, I, I mean using subtools is I think is essential. Like learning to use different subtools. It's it's almost like like layers in Photoshop. Like if you if you only use one layer, I mean you can create amazing things, but you know, you have less control over how things together so it is it is it is it is it is an essential concept to to be able to manage this the subtools i think so even if you get lost with different subtools there is a, a bunch of different tools and, and and strategies that you can use to manage them uh, not just the the folders i mean the selection uh, the way that you select them the way that you um have visibility over them um and i, I can just show you really quickly so one of the things that are very you know, it's very easy to do. Is if you if you're not in solo mode, uh, just to select different subtools, you probably know this. You holding the Alt key will just select the different subtools, right? So I'm, I can just hold Alt and select the horns, go into solo and work with it, or I can go to the body, solo and work with that. That is kind of like how I prefer to select the different subtools. Uh, but you can also press N in your keyboard. And that will bring the entire list of your subtools here. So the many different ways to to deal with subtools, I guess, and uh, um, that is and it's very handy. Uh, Mr. Manson, how are you doing? It's great to have you here. Where can I find that brush? Um, that brush, um, I haven't shared that brush. I probably can. It's not like I said. It all I did was I took the the standard brush, increased the the strength. And add more lazy mouse. That's really all. The, all there is. Uh, what method do you use for posing a character with subtools? Uh, we use. Well, I use um, the Transpose Master, and that is a fantastic plugin. That it's a. It, it comes with ZBrush Transpose Master here. So we'll use that in the next stream to to pose the character definitely. So just tune in for that one. Uh, the lazy mouse work with standard brush. E every. Yeah, you can turn it on for almost every brush, except like move brush. Uh, to activate it, go to the stroke palette, and here you have lazy mouse. So if you see, I, as I highlight over these tools, it's the same thing as what I have in the other side. So yeah, stroke palette, lazy mouse. So I have this button here, and the lazy step, oh, sorry, not the lazy step, the lazy radius is this one here. 
So um, if this is your brush, this will activate that um, that radius, right? Or that that lazy mouse, and this radius will be how long the the stroke, or so how long the the drag, or how long the laziness would be. So that's in the stroke palette. Cool. So hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do uh, with these with the horns. At, at this point, it's pretty rough. Um, you know, it's just a a quick pass to to have an idea of where things are going to be. Um, I want this one to be more more obvious. At the moment, it's kind of hard to tell which ones go in and which ones go out, um, especially because they're almost the same width in in terms of like how sharp these details are. Uh, but that's the next step, right? So that's the next thing that I want to do is go over the same thing, but I'm going to use the inflate brush. The inflate brush is just the, the standard brush, the standard inflate brush. I haven't done anything to it. Um, but what's good about this is that the inflate brush push things or uh, yeah, push the polygons in um, along their normals. So in this area, for example, if I press the Alt key and then just inflate, you see uh, this is very very strong. But you see everything gets like pushed out or deflating it, but or it's inflating it, but in the opposite direction. So that is kind of what I want to do. I want to just go very quickly with not too much pressure, and I just want to increase make the, the difference between the kind of like the inner area of the horn and the outer area a little bit more obvious. So all I'm doing is holding the Alt key and inflating in the kind of like the opposite direction all these details. So making this these indentations um, a bit bigger compared to the to the other side. I'm gonna try to keep this one subtle because if I push this too much, I'll destroy the the geometry. You start to see more of the uh, faceted polygons there. But I mean, we still are at 100, 150,000 polygons, so it's pretty good. We have a lot of room to to play with details. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing. So that's a, that's about it. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, I want to do the same thing for the outer area, but this time I'm not going to press the Alt key. I'm just going to increase the brush and go over them so that instead of basically doing the opposite thing. So I'm just bringing these details closer together or reducing the, the gap between them, make it, making it even more even sharper. And this is all uh, inflate brush. You could potentially do this with the deformers and just select um, one of the polygroups that we originally did, uh, mask the rest, and then just use the inflate inflate, just the inflate slider. Um, I just want to do it with the, I prefer to do it with the brush in this case because I have more control over the the flow that, that I want to keep. And I think that's about, that's about it. It looks all right. And let's go ahead and inflate kind of like the border as well. Just want to add a bit more thickness here. So it's more prominent all the way around. Cool. So um, I think that's that's looking alright. Let's just do a quick inflate pass, like a general pass to tighten these polygons a bit more. Same thing with holding uh, holding Alt. All right. So that's looking alright. Uh, what I'll do now is do another subdivision. I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster here so that we can start with the with the with the mask. Just gonna smooth everything a bit. And refine these edges that are slightly 
sharper. Just going with the smooth brush and tweaking things with the inflate brush. So you see that the, the amount of brushes that I use at this stage are, are very limited and for the most part the default ones really. The only different one is the, the custom brush, the custom standard brush that I created, but it's you could totally use the, the normal the standard brush that comes with ZBrush. It's just that um you will probably take a little bit longer <laughs> just because it needs it needs a little bit more pressure to, to do this faster. All right. So let's leave this one here. We can just go with the stand with the damp standard brush now, and we can now that we have another subdivision level and more geometry, we can refine this a bit more and just add a bit of randomness in terms of of the crevices. And I'm not going for a fully realistic horn, really. Uh, I want to keep this a bit stylized. Not necessarily cartoon, like a cartoon style, but more yeah, more stylized so that it doesn't feel fully, you know, realistic. I'm not going for for that for that look in this case. So I'm just adding some additional crevices, smaller ones, so they're not overpowering the the general shape, but you know they help to sharpen and refine those details. Okay, so this still is pretty rough. We could spend a lot more time just making sure. I mean, if you want more details and make it look more realistic, uh, just probably add a few more subdivision levels and keep adding details as, oh, keep subdividing as you add more details. But I think, um, again, I want to keep this relatively soft uh, in terms of the surface. I don't want too much details really. Just enough so that you understand what I'm what I'm, or, or, the, or the viewer really understands the what the, what I'm trying to do with the character, which is showing that this is some kind of horn. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my just to finish up this uh, the horn pass. I'm gonna go to my extra my extra brush. And what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of lazy mouse, so I'll have a stronger version of this. I'm going to reduce the brush size. And I just want to add like additional height to this area, to this kind of border. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to store a morph target. And this is what's going to help us sort of sharpen those details. And the reason I stored a morph target before I do this is because this is a very, very strong effect. So if I if I do it too much, or if I go over an area that is just destroying the the topology a little bit, I can just go back with the with the morph target brush. So all I'm trying to do here is sharpening this area and try to integrate this part of the of the horn so that it feels, you know not completely disjointed. All right, so not not a continuous line, just some areas that um, should be sharper, I think. But as soon as I remove the, the lazy mouse, this is uh, with this particular brush that I created is very is very strong, so I have to be careful with the, how much pressure I applied. Oh, another thing I think this brush has is trails, now that I remember. I made it a long time ago, so um, that's also another reason why it's very strong. It, it has trails, so that means it's repeating the same stroke over and over a few times. All right. 
every now and again my my zbrush is kind of like stopping i don't know if that's making it a, a bit sluggish but it's not too bad I'm just using a, a just a larger brush with the same, I mean, without the lazy mouse, just to push this thing a bit more. And just because it is stronger, it just it's more obvious the the difference. So these are the areas that I can. I mean, it, it feels like too much, but these are the areas that I can fix with the with the morph target. All right, let's have a look at how everything is looking. So um, you have this kind of like branching, like it looks almost like a, yeah, like it's branching out into into the into the horn so that's kind of what I'm going for I might want to do the same thing here that at the other sort of side just make it just try to keep things consistent a little bit so if I do that in one side I'll probably want to compensate with this other one as well and there's just another line yeah you won't probably see it in the in the render if I do a render from the front but this is kind of like a character that you can see from every angle so I'm gonna make sure that I spend time as much time at the back as I would in the front or you know the face and, and stuff like that and again I'm not too worried about how much how much volume I'm adding here because this this transition looks a little bit too harsh uh, but again it's it's kind of like part of the, the process this is kind of the first step and then I'll tune it down or tone it down with the with the morph target and the smooth brush as well. And also at, at this point, I mean, I'm not using many references for this. Uh, but you could use reference and try to make it more realistic and more closer to the to what a real horn would look like. Um, I'm exaggerating this quite a bit again. I'm trying to go for a more stylized version. Um, you won't see this much difference between one side and the other, or at least the details in one side. Um, but again, I, I'm, trust, I'm trying to to do design. Uh, I mean, I try to put some some of my you know design input in it um, and stylize it a little bit so that is the reason why I'm doing this type of details all right so I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster because otherwise we won't have to do all the other phone parts or the other phone things that I want to show you so these are kind of like the manual details Again, um, so I'll do a quick pass to polish this a bit because again, it looks like the transitions are a little bit harsh. So with the smooth brush, you can, again, you can use the, mood, the smooth brush or because we have, we stored a morph target before we started with a whole this, uh, this pass, uh, we can use the, the morph target brush. Uh, let's just bring it from here. Um, morph. So you'll see this one will basically erase all those details just because we have a morph target uh, selected. So I'm gonna just very softly apply some pressure here just to blend these 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 lines a bit more so that it doesn't feel as kind of like a detail that is just stuck on top. So this is a this is an awesome tool in ZBrush to 
to fine tune transitions more than anything and just uh, come up with you know refinements of the details and also you could have already you could also added some sculpting layers before you do the before you actually start sculpting so there's a lot of things that you can do I mean um, if you want full control over what you're doing I would probably use um, I will start recording in a layer and also or the other way around I will store a morph target and record in a sculpting layer so then you have control over the overall um, influence of the layer but then you also have control over exactly which areas you're adding the details so that's kind of what that is let's do a quick save let's have a look at the chat hey Juan um, Mr. Manson, how do you use uh, the surface noise? Can you show this um, in the project, please? The surface noise, yeah, th that's going to be part of the mask. So in just a second, when we move into the mask, uh, we'll probably get to play with that as well. Hey, Seth Luis, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. Um, when I apply the surface noise, it loses all the effects. I'm not sure what you mean by that. If if you mean it loses the effect of the surface noise, uh, when you apply the surface noise of the over the surface, you need to make sure that you have enough geometry to describe those details. Otherwise, yeah, you will it, it, you won't lose them. It just you won't be able to see the same um, the same level of accuracy if you don't have enough enough geometry. Cool. So let's have a look at this from a different angle. I mean, you can do um, surface noise as, as well in here. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I'm going to just delete my morph target. We don't need it anymore. And one thing that you can do if you want to add more details to this is uh, bring custom brushes. So I'm just going to do one here. So some of these ones, uh, some of these rocks brushes, I use them for um, detailing creatures as well. So just to give you an idea of all the like all the style of sculpting you can do with these custom brushes. Probably we need a subdivide this one more. Um, so see this is the type of you know very quickly create this kind of like rocky feeling for a more textured and realistic horn I guess. So it looks more, way more detailed, uh, but that's not necessarily the look that I'm going for. Although I don't mind it. Let me just do a quick pass um, and then turn it down. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and do store morph target. I'm gonna go to layers, create a new layer, and I'm just gonna do a quick pass with this brush that creates these type of details very quickly. Uh, but it's a, it's a very strong effect and I'm just applying it a, a little bit randomly in the sense that I'm not con too concerned about the like how much details I'm really adding because I'm going to control that from the layer and the morph target and then I mean it's not totally random as in I'm trying to also follow a bit of the flow of these lines But again, um, the the layer brush, uh, sorry, the layer, the sculpting layer, is the one that would allow you to control the amount and the influence of these of these details, whereas the morph target allows you to control the placement or refine the placement of these details. So that's why I'm not I'm, I'm doing it a little bit, you know, extreme. So it doesn't look very uh, refined right now, a bit, a bit sketchy, but we're still getting all those details, which is nice. And I guess, I mean, the, this, this stylization or the style that I'm going for, it, it is, um, I mean, this could work fine. Um, the the overall shape and the, the primary shapes are the ones that are kind of like giving it that that style more than anything. So it's just whether or not you want to keep all those details at the end. 
All right, so I think that is good enough. Uh, so this is a, a really easy way to add this intricate pattern of details. Um, so that is if you, um, yeah, so Queen Suite, hey, quick, su Queen Suite. Um, so this organic brush is just one of the brushes from the from the rock pack. Uh, you can get it from the ZBrush guides. And basically, I mean, it's not just for rocks um, because it's not it's not based on an alpha that you can just click and drag like most rock brushes are. Um, that's the difference. So it's not like a, it is using an alpha, but it's not just an alpha that you click and drag to create that specific detail. It's a, it's a sculpting brush, an organic sculpting brush, but it, it uses an alpha to control the amount of details and a whole bunch of other um, settings that are not really that complicated, but you know, they're already tweaked for, for you. So um, yeah, so once um, once I have these, like like it is right now, like like I said, it's very sketchy and and strong. Uh, we can use the the two controls that we have now to uh, tweak the the intensity and the placement. So first, I'm gonna move to my I don't have it here. My morph target brush, M morph. So with this morph target brush, um, I can just refine the placement. Let's say I don't want as my, as many details here. You could do something like that. Obviously, now the transition is too harsh, so it's gonna be gonna be a bit softer when I apply this brush. The outer edges in this case, I'm gonna try to keep them a little bit more subtle. With less details, I guess. Uh, and that also, hopefully, will help me to create some contrast. So it's kind of like smoothing the details, um, especially around the like the top areas. Um, but I'm not really smoothing anything. <laughs> it looks like I'm smoothing this, but I'm also because I'm using just the morph target. It's going back to the to the original level. I don't know if you guys uh, have used this before, but it's a it's a fantastic tool. Basically, what this is doing, just so you know, really quickly. So let's uh, let's assume that this is the the surface, right? And you store a morph target here, right? So this is the morph target now. So the surface and then the um, the the morph target is the the blue line, right? So it's it's slightly it's exactly the same area. And then the sculpting brushes, right? You start doing all these details, right? And this is kind of like a side view. And then when you use the the morph target brush. And start doing what I'm doing here. It's not. It's basically taking, let's say, this point of the detail and pushing it down up to this point. So it won't go lower than this, right? It will stay at this morph target. So the the idea with that is that, um, and that is why it's better than the smooth brush in this case because you won't smooth out the details that you did previously to creating the the morph target. All right, so this is kind of like, I like to push things to the extreme <laughs> and then just turn it down a bit. But if you if you exaggerate things, um, that also help you to to understand what the, what that, what that whatever effect you're, you're using is doing or whatever layer you're using is doing. So I like to do that quite a bit, just push things uh, and then just take the time to refine refine those areas. All right, so I think just want to make sure that not not everything is kind of like at the same level as well. Just again to create some some content. All right, so that's and I think it's looking all right. Um, so now that I finish, let's say with this this pass or this cleanup of the morph target, right? Uh, and you can also see before and after if you just do a switch. So this is without any details and now this is with the details and 
inside an area. So it looks um, definitely more interesting. Uh, but then also you have the, the layer, so you can just reduce that to zero, and then you have nothing. It's kind of like switching um, the morph target, but the layer allows you to just tweak the intensity, so how much of these details you actually want, right? And having layers actually allows you to um, invert the effect. So for some reason, if I wanted to do the opposite, I can just push this down, like the layer to minus one, and you see it creates a completely different effect, just pushing these details minus one versus one, right? So um, pretty powerful stuff. So at one, we have too much maybe, so I'm just gonna turn it down a bit to 0.5 or thereabouts. All right, so um, maybe just a little bit more just to sharpen those details. Perfect. Um, now that we finish with that pass, we can go ahead and bake all the layers. So I'm just gonna click bake. So now the layer is uh, kind of like yeah baked into the into the actual mesh. Um, we still have the morph target, so we could just keep refining the some areas that I just missed in here. And that that's about it. Perfect. And I'm gonna delete the morph target. I don't think I need it anymore. Everything looks fine. Let's go ahead and delete the morph target. Um, and let's go, let's do a quick save, get out of solo mode. Uh, so this is starting to have a little bit more character. Uh, we can definitely go over this and keep refining it and you know add more details, but um, I think at this point, I'm happy with how this is looking. Uh, we can also go back to the lowest subdivision level now that we have the details. Um, I think I would like to just make this a bit more prominent. This, this line here. So this is just in the lowest subdivision level, moving things around to fine tune the kind of like the main shape. Right, and then go back to the high subdivision level and we still have all the details. All right, let me see if you guys, if you guys have any questions so far or anything that, I mean, I don't know if this is interesting. It's, it's, it's very manual uh, sculpting. And like I said, when I do this type of thing, I just zone out and <laughs> it's hard for me to talk while I'm doing these type of things. So hopefully it's interesting. Um, cool technique with the morph target. Great, glad you like it. And it is definitely a, a very powerful technique. Um, it gives you a lot of control. Um, Eva Pixel, how do you find the time to know all this stuff? <laughs> Yeah, um, I just use this quite a bit. So um, I, I probably am not as uh, as efficient with other software as I am with ZBrush because I've been using it for a long time since like it was introduced almost uh, ZBrush 2.0. Um, but if you're interested, uh, this is completely off topic, but if you're interested in um, kind of like um, an, my approach to learning a software um, in specific ZBrush, but any other software, there is a there is a couple of a two part tutorial in the ZBrush guides that is called how I learn ZBrush or how to learn a software, and I show you kind of like my methodology of learning a new software and how I got introduced to ZBrush. Because at the beginning I was pretty much like every everyone else when they first opened ZBrush, um, you sort of like taken aback a little bit because it looks, there's so many things you can do that you might feel overwhelmed. So um, I treat it as a, kind of like a metaphor and and everything is just a metaphor like since from the, the window itself, like we call this entire interface a window, but it's not a window. It's just a, I mean, it is a window because now we, we know it is a window, but um, <laughs> this is like completely off topic, off topic, but if you if you watch the entire tutorial, it, it will make more sense uh, what, what I'm trying to say. And it's kind of like a step-by-step -step methodology of of how how to approach the learning of a software and and how to keep at um, how to keep developing your skills in it. Um, Bronze Tiger, hey Pablo, love when, uh, loved when you were on Draw with Jasa. What a tablet is that? Um, so with Jasa, that's uh, for those who don't know. I'm sure you know Jasa. It's, it's all over the internet, but um, Jasa, it's, it's, it's his. He's um 
is an artist uh, based in Melbourne as well. So we did a a fun little little sketch with the uh, the Mobile Studio Pro. So that is the it's the equivalent to the Cintiq that I'm using, but it's also a computer. So it's just a mobile um, mobile tablet. So it's really really handy. Are you able to show us projecting from low res to high res? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's really easy. Not not a very complicated thing. We can do it probably with the face. How can I upgrade in sculpting? Trying to so much tutorials. Uh, you mean like um, progress you or, or yeah, upgrade your skills in sculpting? Uh, that's just something that requires time and practice. I would I would advise that you take a real life object, a, a very simple one. Uh, you can start with like um, I remember when I was starting with this. I I used the uh, I forgot the name. It's a it's a it's a nut. <laughs> it's a it's a little I forgot. It, it's kind of like an almond nut. It's a I forgot the name, but basically it's as simple as as that, like a little peanut. Um, and then I just took photos from different angles, and I try to recreate that exact the, the exactly the same um, peanut. Um, and you think it's just going to be oh just just a sphere or just a squash sphere, and that's it. But if you analyze everything, uh, you start to understand you know the the volumes a little bit better and where the details are and how much details. So that's a good way to, you know, upgrade, like you said, or, or increase, um, enhance your <laughs> your your techniques as well with uh, sculpting. So uh, that's something that you can do. Just take uh, something that is very very simple or that looks similarly seem seem to be very very simple, and then try to recreate it. And um, that way, you can also be able to judge yourself uh, as the progression of your skills if it looks realistic or if it looks exactly like the the real object. So that's a uh, very easy thing to do uh, to help you with that. Um, Sewerage Guide is fantastic. I have it. I have you said great. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, nice horns, complex shapes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so it looks complex, but ultimately it's a very, very simple thing, right? Let's move on and let's work on the face, cause, uh, on the mask, because that's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to be able to show you a few different things. And we still have. Uh, lots of time. Right, so I'm going to select the face. Let's do, uh, I think I did a quick save already, but just in case. And I'm going to go to the sub tool that I have, the the face. But I don't want to work on this one. I want to separate this uh, mask into a few different tools to make it a little bit more complex and, and interesting. And the reason I do like to separate it is so that I have more control of the different effects. So I'm going to have, um, let's say, yeah, I'm going to have three different sets of tools. Uh, uh, this is what I'm thinking, but I haven't tried it, so I might need more or less. Don't doesn't matter. So the first pass is just going to be like uh, the wood. Uh, I'm thinking of doing this kind of like a wood, uh, wooden mask, where you can see the, the chips of wood. Uh, like, like if this character actually took a tool and very roughly just carved in the shapes to make the mask out of a, a log of wood. So that would be the first pass. Then we do some details with um, uh, polygroup it, and that's I'm going to show you a really cool technique. And then after that, we can just do refinements and some sculpting as well, um, just to make it more interesting. And then uh, hopefully we'll we'll have time, but I think we will, which um, we can we can do some uh, fiber mesh, just some some of the hairs are sticking out of. Uh, let me just show you. So. So this bit here, so that is uh, what I'm thinking is kind of like, not feathers, but like a, I don't know, like a fox hair or something like that. And that is just sticking out from underneath the mask. Uh, maybe it goes all the way around, but it's not as prominent at the top, right? So that is what I'm thinking with this. Um, all these details that you can see here, like these lines, I mean, it's very sketchy, but you get the idea. I mean, all these lines, there will be part of the polygroups and the polygroup technique that I'm going to show you. And other than that, what you see behind those details, which is not very obvious in this sketch, is going to be the um, like the first part that we're going to start working on right now. So the first thing I want to do is keep this as it is. And I'm just going to duplicate that. Go into solo mode 
and I think um, I think we did a uh, remesher with this one. It's a single-sided polygroup or single-sided polygon, uh, but that's fine. What I would like to do is maybe give it some thickness already. So let's just do that before we get started with with anything else. Um, all right. So oh, let's leave this one on actually. I'm gonna go to the C remesher palette geometry and C remesher. Here we go. Um, again, you can try the legacy or not uh, because this is an organic shape and I don't have too many hard surface or hard edges. Uh, it might give you a better result or might give me a, a better result using the legacy. So I'm just gonna leave this one on and I'm gonna use half and I'm just gonna, it's just, let's do a C remesher. Sometimes with the legacy, the when you leave the half button on, it's not as obvious the, the reduction of the polygons. So you have to keep an eye on, on the active points. So see, I have 31. So that one looks all right. If I do it again with half, it should give me 15 in theory, 15,000. That's how it looks. See, around 13. So it is doing it quite obvious, but when you get to a certain point, like in this at this stage, um, it won't reduce it to, let's say, 7, 7,000. Let's do it again. All right, kind of did it, so that's all right. Let's just keep doing it. All right, so 2,000 polygons. That is actually not too bad. Um, and I have a nice continu continuity of, of polygons here, so that is pretty good, actually. I mean, this one could be improved this uh, this polygon here but let's do one more time just to to see what that gives us so that's actually pretty good I'm not um, I'm happy with this uh, I'm gonna undo this just one second and I'm going to switch to the normal or the new one the new serial measure see what that gives us all right so that you'll see that the difference is quite obvious so just trying to, I mean, the, I think the the new serial measure is definitely better. Sometimes I prefer to use the legacy, but um, so these these loops here, that's gonna probably work a little bit better for the type of mask that I'm trying to do. So I think I'm happy with this. Actually, no, it doesn't look too bad. Um, just the, this area here, we can we we can work on this a bit better. So I'm gonna select the move brush or I have that selected already, and I'm just gonna click on these points and just push them closer. Do some very, very minor refinements to the base, to the base mesh. So, um, as you can see, it's a very, very easy, very simple process, really. Um, using the C remesher, and the only reason I tried legacy and not is just because, like I said, it's an organic shape. So, um, I mean, I, I thought I, I just think I got lucky with this with this um, geometry. I'm not sure if this point right here is going to give me some problems with the subdivision. So let's just try that out first. So I'm going to subdivide this a few times, and I think it looks pretty smooth. Let's just don't do that. All right. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Uh, we can refine the, the shape a bit just with the move brush. I wanna maybe sharpen this, these lines a bit. And make this center line, uh, which is kind of like the, the nose of the mask. Uh, and I'm trying to replicate similar to uh, like an owl. Replicate the shape of, a, of an owl head. So very, very simple and minor tricks here. Let's check the polygons. All right, so that looks that looks good. So before I do anything with anything else with this, uh, what I would like to do is actually copy this and save it. And I do this often. Um, as you can see, I have a folder called the originals. So I will duplicate this one and take that one back to the originals. So I just like to have it there in case that I need to go back and I don't have to reopen a, an older version of the 
of this project. So I just keep everything. If I open this one here, you see I have a bunch of original stuff that I can reuse at any point within the project. All right. So now that I have this one, this is still a single sided polygon. Um, what I want to do is assign some polygroups really quickly. Again, just because it might be useful later on. So it's better to do it. Um, it's, it's better to do it right now before uh, before we move any any further. So let's go ahead and use the select lasso. I think I want to get this poly loop going. Um, yep. And I'm gonna do auto group. And that's that's about it really. Um, let's also do another one around there. I'm gonna hide these two. And this one as well. Oops. Hang on a second. What's going on? There we go. Auto group. Cool. Let's bring back everything. So we have a bunch of polygroups. Uh, what I like to do is keep this one separate. So I'm going to use this one and the purple one. So this is just going to be a single one. Right, and then that one and that one. So this is going to be a another one, different color. All right, and then we have this blue one to a different color, so it's easier to see. Well, ah, uh, come on. All right, a yellow one. Cool. So very simple set of polygroups. Um, we have a nice topology now that the automated C remesher gave us so we can, you know, keep working on this. Um, now, what I'll, before I do the subdivision and creating the, the effect that I want, um, I want to do two things. I want to duplicate this again. <laughs> uh, so I have three duplicates. I have the original sketch, uh, which at this point we can actually just push it up as well or into the originals. Right, so we actually have two of the same. Uh, this second one is going to be the one that I'm going to use as a base to create the the pieces of wood or the different, the more detailed version of the mask. So I'm going to turn it off for the time being. And in this one, we're going to work on the thickness. So this is going to be the base of the mask and is the one that is going to look like chipped wood or carved wood. All right. So um, yeah, before we, we start with this, I'm just going to bring in the C modeler. Um, and the C modeler is just a, the brush in Zbrush. And I'm going to right click on our face and I'm going to select Q mesh, make sure that all polygroups are on. And this is what allows us to create the thickness. So if I click any polygon, you see, I get this effect and now we have thickness. So it's really easy, but I don't want to create this kind of like inflate effect because I'm losing a lot of the details I already originally had. So I actually want to create the, the thickness like going in. So I'm going to undo that. So all we have to do is click from anywhere really, and then just push that in. Whoops. Like so. And I don't want this mask to be too thick. I'm just gonna go for something like that, right? Cool. So we kept everything the way that we had it. Now we just have thickness. Now the only caveat of using this technique as in creating thickness inwards is that because we had a single sided polygon, then the normals are going to be flipped. And what that means is if I turn this double, which uh, for you guys should be under the uh, display properties here, this double. So if I turn double off, you'll see that it looks like everything is inside out and it looks weird. <laughs> So that means just that the poly, the, the normal, uh, the, the way that the polygons are facing are kind of inwards because we did it inwards rather than outwards. So uh, that is just something to keep in mind. It's not a problem because just, we can just go to flip and this button here, I also have it around there. So if you click flip, it's just going to flip the normals and regardless of, you know, you have this on and off, it's going to look good, right? So the normal, the polygons, the polygon normals is a very important thing uh, to keep in mind. Cool. So now we have thickness and we have a set of polygroups. So this one right here, you see, started to get a little bit, you know, uh, close together. And that could 
you know potentially be a problem so what I'll do really quickly is go to the move brush and Let me just do a quick save. I don't know what happened there. Right, so I can use this smooth brush and do this type of thing, but um, there's a risk that I'm also smoothing this area. I'm going to undo it, so you'll see it, I smooth that area. So things one would use the back, uh, mask back mask back face polygons, which is this uh, back mask back face mask, uh, which for you guys should be under the brush palette auto masking and it's this button here so that protects the, the polygons that are behind this one but because we have polygroups it's just gonna be easier to you know select this one hold control and click outside just to select uh, mask everything bring back the rest of the polygroups invert the mask by control click and in the canvas so now we can use either the move brush or the smooth brush and whatever we do right is not gonna affect anything of this area because we're protecting it with the mask so very quickly, I'm just going to smooth these areas a bit. Something like that should be fine. I just want to have a, a, this this area. I mean, you won't be able to see it, but it's just going to be easier for adding details and stuff on the other side. Cool. So if we get out, this is what we have. Again, very simple, clean topology, base mesh, uh, all within ZBrush. Perfect. So this, mm, I just, <laughs> I just have a duplicate of these masks, if you remember. Uh, but this one doesn't have any thickness. So I'm just thinking, uh, you know what? Let's leave it, let's leave it like that. And we can probably get away of creating some thickness using the the edge loop, yeah, let's just leave it like that. And let's continue with this one. So I also like the the work that we did with the with the thickness. Uh, you could just don't do this, but again, I like to duplicate it. It's kind of like a very, you know, it's, it's the way that I work and I'm, I'm just used to do it. So I'll prefer to just do different duplicates of different stages. And if I need to, again, I can come back and, and work on that. All right, so it looks like we haven't done much, but we actually have a nice set of polygons that we can work and, and start subdividing. So the first thing I want to do now is do a few subdivisions. Again, this is going to be just the base of the of the mask. So you'll see it's nice and smooth. If you want to keep this sharper, um, what you can do is just, uh, actually, let's just do that so you can, and I can show you a different technique. So I'm going to go to the C modeler. Oh, by the way, this is something that I found out the other day. I had no idea about this. And it's actually pretty pretty cool, which let me see if I can remember what I did. It's um it's kind of like a shortcut. Let's see if I if it works. Um and it works with any brush, which is great. Let me see if I can re replicate it <laughs> otherwise. No. Oh, I think it's with the Hang on, with the lasso or mm, I forgot. I forgot how I did it. Hang on a second, maybe it's ah. Uh, there we go. So this is something that I found out by accident. I had no idea about it, and it's actually quite good. Uh, you can using the the mask, uh, the select lasso. You can create um, creasing, and I didn't know about that. Um, and all you have to do is hold Control and Shift to access the, the select lasso, right? And then just hover over the edge that you want, and then press uh, also hold the Alt key. So Control, Shift, and the Alt key, and click it once, right? And that creates a crease, which is which, one second, getting some some weird alarm. Oh, my watch is telling me that I have to move. Right. All right. Um, so yeah, let me just don't do that. But basically, it's a it's a really easy way to create um, creasing. I don't know if you're gonna ever gonna use that, but I just thought I shared.
you know you could do it this way. Um, so the way that I'm going to do it is with the C modeler, right? I'm going to right click on an edge and I'm going to cre uh, select creasing. So I want to crease that and I want a edge loop complete so that I do it to the entire edge loop. So I'm going to click on this one and you'll see I get that double edge dotted line around that edge and I'm going to do the same thing here at the top. I also do it around the eyes. That gives us. So I'm going to do the same. Thing, but I'm just getting um, it's getting a little bit slow. All right, let's go back to the move brush. Select the matcap gray, and I'm going to do what I did before, which is just so I did, so what, subdividing this a bit, right? So we have, you know, this nice crisp edges here. Um, they're a little bit too crisp, like too strong for my taste. So after doing a, a couple of subdivisions, what we can do is the um, creasing panel. Um, where are we? Crease, 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 yep. Yeah. Um, creasing panel, and I'm gonna uncrease everything. So uncrease all, right? So now we remove that creasing that we had, and let's continue subdividing. So now we can gonna get, we're gonna get this nice beveling, that smooth edge, um, you know. So it's not too sharp, but it's not completely, um, you know, completely smooth. So let's do it one more time. So now we have about 500,000 polygons. So that is, that's pretty nice. Let's do a quick, Quick save, and then we get into the actual um, technique of the surface noise that I wanted to show you. Um, custom interface, custom interface, still a problem for me. It never saves brush, etc. Doing something wrong, I guess. Um, the the brushes won't be saved with the interface. If you want, if you create custom brushes, you have to save them individually. The interface will only save will only save the placement or where you put those brushes. Um, but if you want them to load with ZBrush, you have to put those brushes in the startup folder. Can you print fiber mesh on a model? Um, not sure what you mean. Uh, 3D printing? 3D printing? Is that what you're referring to? I have a pixel. Uh, Mr. Madison, I'm very excited to see this finish. Uh, you could please finish it here in the ZBrush live stream. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's the idea. Uh, but the idea is to show you a project um, with this with this guy. Um, yeah, so we'll probably finish it. I mean, it's going to take a few a few lessons. <laughs> so we still have time uh, for the mask, which is what I really wanted to show you today. Some some techniques that are really cool. Um, Edward Droid looks awesome. Thank you very much. Glad you like it. Do you make a sculpture in real life, as in clay? Yep. Um, that's something that I really haven't shared with, you know, in social media with most people. But that's that's what I used to do before. I don't know if I have. Uh, let me just show you something really quickly. I mean, these are about 10 years old, really. So they're pretty, pretty old stuff. Um, but this is the type of thing that I used to do. So this is kind of like a, it's broken and everything. Hopefully you can see that. So it's, um, it's a caricature and it's all done in uh, sculpt, it's sculpty. So with different colors and that's the type of thing that I used to do. So this is more cartoonish. This is a, a waiter um, that I did for a short film. This is already broken. This is the, this is the normal uh, clay and it just baked it and painted Edgar Allan Poe. 
This is broken right in the middle of the face. So this is about like 10 years old sculptures. Uh, this is a, an Australian Aboriginal. Again, it's also it's 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 a hard sculpt, so it's yeah. So anyway, that that's that's the type of thing that I used to do before. So I um, yeah. So my background is also a bit of that more traditional sculpting. Cool. Um, delete undo history because it is slow the performance when I try to auto save. Um, oh. You can just go to file and make sure that this is off and when it does the auto save you won't save that. Uh will you do the same character as some cartoon in Zbrush? Um yeah, at some point maybe. It was really funny up close. <laughs> All right. Let's let's continue with the mask cuz I I want to show you some stuff. So I have this uh at 500 500,000 polygons so we can still subdivide it a bit more and then you know keep working with that so the first thing i want to do is create that chip look of the of the wood so we can do two things we can go to the um, surface noise and this is a, a pretty cool trick so if you click on the surface and click on noise this window will pop up and then you can just play around with this um, surface noise you know, the scale of the noise, the strength, and all that. Uh, but what I want to do is use the, the plugin, right, the noise plug. So I'm going to click on this noise plug. And it just opened that, that up on a separate, on my other screen. So I uh, just want to place this in a way that you can see what's happening. All right. So here you have a, a whole bunch of different styles that you can apply and, and, and you know, um, procedural stuff that you can use and they're really really powerful stuff for different different things the first thing I want to do is let's just select the um, grid just because it's gonna be easy to see so I, I, you can select anything that you want and then like tick it, ticking the box and then make sure that interactive update is selected then click OK and then here we just need to select uh, once we added this noise plug this plugin scale will be visible or available. So I'm just going to play with that. Um, maybe increase the strength. Um, the mix with basic noise, that's the original noise that I showed you, so I can reduce that. And I only want to have visibility of the noise plug. There we go. So I'm going to increase the strength and reduce the scale. OK. So now that we can see a little bit better what this uh, what this plugin is doing or the the selection that we that we did uh, we can go ahead and tweak it so um, let's go to edit so click on edit and we'll get the same window there we go um, so I'm gonna push it here on the side well first let me just select a different one so I'm gonna select uh, Voronoi, or oh, Voronoi, I don't know how to pronounce this, Voronoi, and this is something uh, that's really cool, okay, so you can see the Voronoi effect in here, right, um, actually, <laughs> let's click OK, and I'm going to, I'm going to tweak this, so you can see more, so this is kind of what I'm after, like a large set of, you know, these indentations, and I'm going to invert this strength, so I'm just going to go for something like that. So straight away you see it looks like it's been it's like a piece of wood that has been just carved very roughly and just chipped away to create this um this shape. So I'm going to work on this something like that. Uh go back to edit so we can edit it. And I just want to go for a larger type of um like a more elongated uh effect. So there's a couple of things that you can do from this um, noise plug. So you can change this method of squared length. I think I'm going to use the squared length, but you can change it to this um, Minko Minkowski, which is also pretty cool. Like You get a bit more wobbly lines, uh, but feel free to play around with this. I like the squared length. It's just uh, plain and simple, but in, it gives you a great effect. 
and then here we can play with the scale factors and that's what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm gonna select the X scale and you see because we have this interactive update on you can see the effect in real time. All right, <laughs> so uh, I just crashed ZBrush. Let's just open it again. Hopefully we didn't lose too much. Hmm. Let me see if I can find a quick save and try to rescue some of the, the work that we did. Because we did a quick save. So shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. And that's the thing with the noise plug. Mm, sometimes sometimes it could be a bit tricky. Um find my quick saves hmm all right let me get back to you on this one because I think we lost uh, a few things so give me five minutes I'll be back try to sort this out Whew, all right, <laughs> I'm back. Cool. So um, we only we only lost a, a bit of the I mean the the zip plugin. Sorry, the the noise plugin. So it's not too bad. We have everything same way that we had it before. So I just did a quick save as well, and we can go and repeat the same thing. Hopefully a bit faster. And let's go to noise. I'm gonna frame this, and I'm going to enable noise plug. And I'm just going to hopefully this is not gonna crash it. It shouldn't, but let's go to the Voronoi again. I'm gonna scale this down. And ooh, I think I found. Uh, okay, so it is doing it. Hmm. All right, so that's a. Uh, that's a that's a good thing that, that that actually is a a bug that can be reproduced so that should be an easy fix for the pixel guys 
so no problem at all I'm just gonna create a new document and I'm just gonna avoid doing that that's that's really all all there is to it so let me load the tool again uh, sorry about these technical difficulties we'll get back to it in just a second all right so let's use the surface noise but we will be a bit careful so I'm gonna select noise frame noise plug Voroni click OK and now we can just tweak it from here I think the the, the issue might be the actual noise plug um, which is fair enough um, let's go ahead and reduce the mix with the basic noise increase the strength and then just reduce the scale a bit so this is this is the the type of effect that I'm going after that, that I'm after anyway I just wanted to make it a bit you know scaling in the y-axis so something we can do is also use these ones here so scaling in the let's say y angle uh, sorry y scale and x and z so let's just reduce it here this is the same exactly the same effect that I was trying to get from the noise plug so we can still do it from here right so I'm just gonna go for something like that that it looks more like elongated chips of wood if that makes any sense and I think the strength is fine you get some weird artifacts but that is just because the noise plug uh, the, the surface noise is just a, a preview effect we haven't applied it to the to the mesh so I'm gonna reduce the actual noise or the basic noise and I think this is looking fine you can play around with the with the curve uh, you can flip it as well from here so you can do flip V and then you have like this more blob blobby effect but I'm I'm happy with this effect as it is now if you have a more complex object and you want to have the same effect all around this is kind of like a it's just a mask so it doesn't have any you know side uh, sides or back of the it's not a full head um, but if you will if you have something more complex then this 3d switch might not work just because this is projecting the effect from the camera angle or from where you selected this so on the sides here uh, the stretching will be very obvious uh, so something that you can do is just do a quick um, UVs for the for the tool and then use the UV because this one doesn't have any UV this UV is not enabled so this one this one right here um, so I'm happy with this let's go ahead and click OK uh, because we lost a bit of time doing these uh, fixes alright so that is um, how the noise works so I can turn it on and off you see it's just a preview of this so in order to kind of like bake it into the mesh we have to apply to mesh so let's just try that and see how that affects all of these borders that we're getting a, a little bit wonky here so let's just try that uh, we can undo if it doesn't work so apply to mesh but it did a pretty good job and you see kind of like gave us these nice edges uh, this nice effect on the edge so that uh, that is pretty handy I'm quite happy with this and this is like kind of like the f um, the base of the mask so it's just a piece of wood that is being carved in um, alright so this is kind of like the first pass of of this and I didn't you will see if you get closer you still see a little bit of uh, the polygons I just didn't want to do it in the in a higher resolution because this creates a, a very sharp edges so all of these edges are going to be very very sharp from the noise plug right and that's why I did it at this resolution so what I can do now is once I bake or this is being applied to the mesh I can do another subdivision and then these edges are gonna be smoother hopefully <laughs> let's have a look so if I do divide you see now we have 1.8 million and you have a smoother edges so it's not as sharp because you know there's no like, there's always a bevel a little bit of bevel everywhere um, in everything cool so that is that is pretty good um, actually there's something else that I would like to do um, which is this one seems to be like a, a, a more generated approach like a yeah a procedural approach but then you can go manually and and make it feel more 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 natural so I'm gonna use the trim dynamic and at this point we can turn off symmetry I just wanna do it here around this side so um, you'll see this is what I'm gonna try to do 
hopefully it works. We have this curvature, right? But it's very soft around here. So this, for example, this area, right? Or these ones here, they don't feel as they don't feel as like a, a, as as flat as they should be. So they have they kind of like it feel like the effect on top of this very soft line. So with the trim dynamic, what we can do is just go over certain areas like this and just try to flatten this a bit more. Maybe reduce the brush size a bit. Uh, you can use the trim dynamic or if you want a more consistent flattening, you can use the H polish, probably it's gonna be better in this case. So yeah, all I'm trying to do here is make it making it feel more. This is just the base, so you probably won't see any of these details. But you know, it's it's good to at least I'm showing you something different. I do it too hard. I mean, you can do this actually before you apply the effect, and that would that would also help. But, you know, um, so I'm just trying to erase, not erase, but um, blending some of the details so they're not all the same size. Maybe something here at the top as well. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can see the what I'm trying to do with this effect, with this sort of like carved wood um, effect. So I'm gonna do a quick save because I'm gonna use the the noise plugin again to add kind of like the like the wood effect or like the wood. Um, the little marks of wood. I oh, <laughs> don't know if that makes any sense. Um, let me just check the chat first. Uh, the offset angle and scale controls in the noise ma maker are working. Um, I, th I think they work. Um, maybe because I'm running something else at the same time, or the the streaming, they might interfere, but it shouldn't. You can have those the scale and the offset and all that within the the no the noise the surface noise editor anyway Hola Alex ¿Cómo estás? Uh, before you end the before you end will you share how you made the second tool window on the right the second tool window on the right um I'm not sure what you mean there uh if you can just be more specific uh, I'm happy to show you if if I can. Um, I'm not sure the second sub tool window on the right. Second sub tool window on the right. Yeah, not sure what you mean. All right. So I'm going to use the surface noise again. Enable that. Go to edit and I'm going to click on edit noise plug. Bring that in. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use the wood pattern here. So it creates this, this wood pattern here. Um, so that's going to be OK. Let's just click OK. And obviously, we can tweak the, the intensity of it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the scale. So you'll see you get all these wood, uh, nice wood um, ridges, which is pretty good. Um, and maybe change the strength a bit. And just play with the scale of it. I want I want this to be very subtle. All right, and also we can play with the with this curve just to make it to sharpen everything a bit. Um, I think let me just flip it. Okay, I'm gonna exaggerate things again. So I'm gonna make it very very strong. OK, 
okay so this is kind of like what I'm going for so um, you can play with the with this curve and you see interactively what it's doing so I'm just gonna try to create those carved in lines play with the scale as well right and just play with the strength of this So all, all I'm doing here is just play with the with the settings that you can get from the the noise maker, making the 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 whole plug the whole noise larger or smaller to get these areas, um, the strength and the curve. That's all I'm doing. All right. So I think something like that looks alright. Again, you can use the angle and the offset and the scale from here. So let's try uh, change the angle a bit. Just trying to re um, reposition some of the the details so it doesn't look kind of like straight in the in the face. Uh, like this area is like too big compared to these areas. So let's we can try it offset as well. All right, so that one kind of looks cool with this um, this point right here. So we can reduce the scale or increase it actually. That's not too bad. And we can play with the offset. I'm gonna try to position that right in the middle, just playing with the offset. Right, and we can scale this down a bit more. All right, I'm not sure if this is getting the effect that I'm going for. Um, let's just push this one back to the center again or somewhere around there hopefully you can hopefully you know what I'm trying to do um, this is gonna take a bit of you know back and forth just trying to get the right the right angle I mean this is you can just come back and refine this later All right, let's play with the with the curve again. And the scale of the noise. All right, let's just leave it there. Click OK. Um, you can play around with this as much as you want. Uh, so what I want to do here is a few things. I want to I want to try to mask the areas that I want to apply these to because I don't want this to be everywhere. Um, so for example, we can go to masking and let's go to smoothness and click my mask by smoothness so you'll see it gets masked very well very evidently the the areas that are not very smooth so in these areas the noise plugin or the noise maker or the surface is not going to be uh, applied to so what i can do is uh, blur that mask a little bit so it's not that's as harsh and grow it a bit more right something like that and let's go ahead and apply this mesh uh, sorry apply the noise but I might not want that in the back face as well so fortunately we have polygroups so I can hold control and shift to select this polygroup control to mask this area bring back everything so now this is protected and these little lines as well so they, they won't affect I mean the noise won't affect those areas and let's go ahead and create a new layer, sculpting layer, so that we can control this after we apply the mesh. So now we have a, a sculpting layer recording this application of this or this uh, this step of applying the noise. So I'm going to click Apply to Mesh, great, and I can I can hide the mask just temporarily, and you'll see it's very subtle, but around the edges of this wood <laughs> there is no there's no effect or there's no noise maker at this point cool so that is kind of what i wanted and now that i have these this mask let's go ahead and take advantage of these and kind of like enhance some of these edges so i'm gonna invert that mask so now you can see this on its own and this is also a really good way to uh, polypaint this right but that's not part of this stream 
So let's go ahead and hide the mask. And I still have the mask, it's just hidden. And I can go ahead and bring in the move brush and then just push things a little bit. Oops. I'll probably have to also mask this as well. So control shift to select this polygroup, mask this. And this is why uh, polygrouping is so useful. I might also want to mask this one as well. Right, because we can just select and create mask and then we can hide the mask. And now I'm going to start pushing some of these these lines a bit more so that not everywhere just just a little bit more so that it feels more more natural this one, this one is too much uh, you can use any sculpting brush really this is very very subtle all right and the mask is still there so I'm gonna clear the mask there we go and we have that very nice sort of subtle effect uh, but again, this is living within a layer, so we can reduce it completely if you don't like it, or we can just turn it down or push it a little bit, right? So I, I don't mind the the effect, so I'm going to leave it like that. Create another sculpting layer. Go to my edge polish. This one is bothering me a little bit, so I'm just going to flatten that out a bit. And that is pretty much it. All I want to do now is create some very specific markings, um, you know, like cuts through the wood and that would be pretty much this step. Uh, we're running out of time so I might not be able to show you the the additional technique I wanted to. Um, let's let's have a look. Let me see if can you guys please check the this the schedule and if there is nobody else after me straight away I can just go over um, a few more minutes to show you that technique if you want. Um, Hey Diego, how you going? Uh, can you share the alphas for this project? I'm not using any alphas <laughs> so far. If I use, I'm happy to share them. Um, so, sure. Sorry for not being more clear. Instead of using a left and right trade for the use uh, for the user layout interface, uh, you have two right trades. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Um, I'll I'll show you that in a second. Um, uh, what's the backface mask should be useful there too? Um, yeah, yeah, backface. But the thing with backface is that that is just for the brush, and I'm using other techniques. Um, but yeah, totally, you can do that as well. Uh, which do you prefer, overstretch or relaxed limbs and fingers for modeling, sculpting part, and why? It really depends on the project, depending on what you're trying to do. Honestly, there's no, there's no one one way to do it. There's many ways. Um, I prefer the relaxed version just because it is more like an in-between. You can go, you can easily go either way. You can full, you can go stretched and or contracted, um, a little bit easier. But it is depending on the workflow, really. So um, I don't know. Did you guys have a look at the schedule? Because otherwise, I'll have to wrap it up in the next five minutes. So I'm going to have a look at, I'm going to bring in another brush that I use quite often, which is this butter knife. It's a custom brush and I have a new layer selected. And this one will allow me, let's do a quick save just in case. This one will allow me to do this type of, it's kind of like the damp standard brush. It just it has, actually I want something stronger than that. Um, let me bring in another, another brush. So this is another custom brush. Um, this one is pretty strong and creates this kind of like crackling effect. Right. Uh, so it's also very organic. So I'm, I'm going to use this just to create some more feature lines here. And I'm also going to make sure that I mask everything except... Uh, hang on a second. I had a mask already, so let's just do that again. Just selecting the polygroups, mask in the back, and there we go. So these ones are just going to be some kind of a straight lines coming from the top, maybe.
and this is in a different layer so if we don't like it we can just go rid of it, get rid of it and this is something that you can also do with um, with the noise plug but because it was sort of playing around um, I mean it wasn't too too reliable before I'm just gonna stay away from it and do it manually so you'll see here we can the the back of this mask so this is going through here which is not good so that's why it's good to have it within a mask you can also use this, the, the morph target right so just gonna reduce it a little bit clear the mask all right so I'm just gonna leave it there uh, a bit subtle and then go with the butter knife that I, that I mentioned at the beginning and we can do a new layer and then just push this a bit more uh, you know what the damn standard brush should be perfectly fine for this job as well cool you can see some problems here um, around the edges but because we have everything in layers as well it's going to be easier to fix let's have a look and uh, next stream is at 7 p.m. PST Oscar Trejo so 7 I started at for PST all uh, right now I won't have much time really all right so let's just um, do a couple of things just to wrap it up just fixing up these details here uh, we can reduce the subdivision level uh, actually um, what I'll do before I'm just gonna bake these layers uh, if you want to keep them what you can do also is do a duplicate of this mask uh, so that you can keep both versions I'm just gonna bake them all and go into this uh, sm um, and I'm just gonna smooth this out a bit manually so I think the other side was well was a bit wonky. There we go. That's not too bad. Cool. So um, thanks by the way for checking that out. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna have to manually refine a bit we can actually uh, polish by by edges let's see if that let's see if that works uh, it might just polish the other details as well but we can try um, polish crisp edges so that does it a little bit but it's also affecting the rest so let's go ahead and mask this out not mask it out, so select it there we go I'm gonna mask everything I think I have the surface noise no it shouldn't, alright uh, mask everything, bring back everything so now um, I don't know why it's leaving this noise maker mask on <laughs> all I'm trying to do here now is just mask these ones without anything else alright I'm still doing this but anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna move on so 
select that mask that bring back everything invert that masking and we can just more like more freely we can bring in the smooth stronger there we go and just smooth this out a bit more and because we have everything else masked uh, we can actually blur the mask a bit so masking blur mask okay so we can smooth this area so that we don't have those weird um, intersecting edges because you can select areas that are like very, very weird and fix them really quickly so see all these hopefully you can see it in the video all these that's really bad so having this selection with the with the masking and everything is very easy to to tweak and I'm using the smooth stronger to to be able to smooth as fast as you can see here in the highest subdivision level cool so I think that is pretty much it let's clear that mask do a quick save and we'll have a look at what the progress that we did today um, it's not much so I'm probably gonna do a little bit more just to a, a few more refine, refinements and then we continue with other stuff in the next stream all right so any I don't know if you guys have any other questions uh, or uh, things that you want to know about this before I wrap it up I'm just gonna do some manual sculpting really quickly with the damp standard brush inverting the effect holding alt just so that I can you know refine these edges that we sort of got rid of when we did the H polish and refining these these crevices as well Again, some of these details or most of these details won't be visible because the, the next step will be to add a bunch of extra um, details on top uh, with the duplicate here that we created. So you won't be able to see it, but so far I think it's looking all right. Let's just do a quick, let me see if I have filters. No. So I'm going to do a quick render with everything visible. Well, the horns and the, and the mask. So it's starting to get a bit more character this this character <laughs> having character so there we go um, maybe just hide this show you just this bit and maybe a different one there we go so uh, quite a bit of progress in, in terms of the details we use a few different techniques more manual stuff for the horn uh, as well as using the morph target and the layers and for the face we just uh, mainly use uh, just as a quick recap we use the C modeler and some noise ma noise maker to create this this type of effect. So um, it's pretty it's pretty slow <laughs> the progress that we made today, but we have some minor er um, mistakes and and crashes. So hopefully hopefully next time we can do we can move a little bit faster. So Oscar Trejo is next in about an hour, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's about an hour. So. We'll leave the the other technique uh, for for the next stream. Uh, the next technique is going to be again adding some details. Uh, where are we? Oh, I think yeah. I don't have the I don't have the spotlight with me, but basically we're going to add some some nice details around the the, the mask and having the the feathers. Um, so what I'll do is just um, like off off camera. Um, I'm going to tweak the the body a little bit. It's not gonna be, uh, you know, the body is not gonna be very visible, so there's, you're not gonna miss much. Um, so I'm just gonna try to leave everything ready for the next stream to just uh, start to do just the fun part. Uh, like I said, adding some details in here for the character and and the and the fiber mesh. The fiber mesh is gonna be relatively simple. I'm just gonna show you some cool techniques of how to uh, groom the fiber mesh. Uh, but the main thing that I wanted wanted to show you today was the the polygroup it. Uh, technique but we'll do that we'll do that in the next um in the next in the next stream just removing this a little bit all right so yeah so i'm gonna leave it here guys because again we have to give it a bit of a space between 
between the streams so that Oscar can um, do all his stuff and preparation. So anyway, uh, hopefully you you find this interesting. Next next stream will uh, definitely hopefully <laughs> will have um, less technical issues and hopefully we'll um, be able to continue and progress a bit faster uh, with the with the phone techniques. So thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, hopefully you you find this interesting and informative as well. I do really have a lot of fun in these little um, streams. Uh, I'm probably going to be streaming as well ne next month. Uh, we just need to wait for Kyle to to produce the the schedule for the next month. But uh, hopefully it will be the same day, same same time. But if not, I'll let you guys on social media. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or anything like that, that's where I most uh, most regularly update stuff. Um, so yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Cheers.